Hey, Jason. Hey, John. Nice guitar, man. Nice guitar, you think? Is thank you. Uh, looking at looking at your picture on the thing, I, I love those guitars, man. Great. Yes, yeah, they're good old Gibson Explorers. Yeah. So how's it going? I'm doing great, man. So we've got John Oliver here, and uh, everything's going good with the new album, Raise the Curtain. Yeah. Doing really good, actually. I'm very surprised. <laughs> now, would you ever imagine that, you know, in 2013, this album would be, uh, you know, making it and the respect that the people are showing for it? I, I thought, to be honest with you, Jason, I thought that people were going to crucify me for this album, man. I was, I was kind of nervous, to be honest with you. That's just being honest, but I'm very, 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 very happy that people are seeing, looking into it the way they are, and it is different, and I knew it was going to be that, but I, I got to admit, I was, you know, I was scared uh, that people wouldn't understand, you know, why I did this like this, so I'm just happy that things are going the way they are. So, John, like, let's say the audio aspect of the album, I find it's very uh, fresh, you know, and today sounding. What do you think of that, you know, from recordings back in the 80s to now? It's well, delivering a certain a quality. Great, that's a great question. And I'll tell you, Jason, you know, um, this might sound weird, but I think a lot of the reason the album sounds like it does is because I used a lot of vintage equipment. I used uh, old Vox amplifiers. I used, um, you know, the bass guitar on the album is a, a duplicate of Paul McCartney's 1963 Hofner violin bass. You know, so I use I use real Hammond B3. I use a lot of really traditional old amps and uh, two all tube amps. I use you know obviously real drums, no triggered sounds, and like I did back in the old days with Sabotage. You know, we didn't have all the. I think a lot of the gadgets and technology that's used today, it may be convenient and cool, but it 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 takes something away from the sound. You know, it it doesn't the, the the, the stuff doesn't sound as warm and as big sounding to me because of the digital stuff and all that. It kind of makes it very harsh and it's small sounding to me, you know. Um, so that was my secret with this is I went back old school and said I'm using my, my Telecaster, my Stratocaster, my Les Paul, my Hofner bass. I'm using Vox and, and uh, old Fender amps and uh, real drums. And that's what I think, uh, you know, uh, why it sounds like it does. And uh, this all out of your personal collection, you know, for uh, equipment, vintage gear and stuff? Yes, mine and, and uh, my friends at Moore Sound Studios, you know, they provided the Hammond uh, B3 and the Leslie, Leslie cabinet. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, some other friends, you know, had some vintage gear and, you know, it's just something about that stuff, you know, tube amplifiers compared to all these solid states and all these, like, uh, what do they call them, V amps and all those those processors and stuff. It it takes away, the set, to me, the sound of the guitar. It makes it sound small. You know, it doesn't have, you're not getting the resonance from the wood, from the, from the fretboard right. or from the body because it's all processed through this little machine, you know, and... I guess I don't know why people don't see like guitar players don't get that, but I said I'm not using nothing. I plugged straight in, straight into the amp, and I might have used the overdrive, you know, on certain songs. That's it. That's it. Nothing else. Yeah, could it be for bands of today? They uh, go the, the lazy way out, you know, and you know get these little V amps and stuff like that, and you know instead yeah, of putting a absolutely. real mic to it. Yeah, hey, you young guys, you're lazy, you fuckers. You're all lazy. <laughs> yeah, and uh, imagine what's going to be in 50 years from now, how easy it's going to start getting. Yeah, you'll be able to play guitar by just holding it and thinking about what you want it to play, you know. You won't even have to use your fingers. You'll just have the guitar hanging from your neck, and you'll go in your mind, go, okay, play... Uh, Star Spangled Banner by Jimi Hendrix. Go! And it'll play, you know. So, John, who who is all playing on this album as well? Well, I have uh, uh, myself, and uh, I have two special uh, friends. Chris Kinder, who's my uh, drummer with the J.O.P. band, and uh, he played drums on most of the album. I played drums on, I think, four songs, and uh, he played drums. I gave him all the hard shit to play. <laughs> and then my friend Dan, who... Uh, also helped me write a lot of this stuff. He's a or he plays organ, 
never played in a band before. You know, he's a total virgin to the whole world. And I, he added a lot of freshness to everything because I had a guy who's never, he never made an album before, never did anything before except play in his own, you know, house, you know. And uh, I, I, he's a great friend and a great writer. And I, those are the two main guys that helped me with the record, um, you know, and uh, that's really about it. I had uh, Jim Morris from Morris Sound played a little uh, solo blurb in the end of the track 11, Can't Can't Get Away. And uh, another friend of mine, Lorian Mohai from Transylvania, he did the bombs. He did bombs for me in the song Armageddon. And, uh, you know, because he plays great whammy bar, and I can't, every time I hit a whammy bar, it breaks the string or something blows up or something. So, you know, so, yeah, that's about it, though. Everything else I played myself. This album was recorded, you know, mostly in a studio setting? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, a lot of it was, I have a, a uh, my friend Dan and I have combined it, our, uh, and Chris Kinder, I have, we have our two home studios uh, the one here at Dan's house where I'm talking to you now, we call it Frontierland. And uh, at Chris Kinder, my drummer's house, we have another little setup, and we call that Shabby Road. And then the rest of the stuff was done, all, all the important stuff was done at Morris Sound, the vocals, the mixing, and all that stuff. And Morris Sound, where I have a long history with them from Sabotage and TSO. And, and more sound is a um, you know legendary studio as well from uh, I'm sure a lot of people have heard of it. Yeah, great place. And, and Tom and Jim Morris are, you know, if you're going to meet two of the nicest people in the world, those are the two guys. They're 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 really great guys, and uh, and they're brilliant at what they do. They're they're really good at what. That's why I keep going there. You know. And John, where where's this gonna, album going to be surfacing that you know people can actually find it? You know, well, the release here in America is uh, July 2nd. I'm going to be uh, doing the Eddie Trunk, uh, Eddie Trunk show on Monday night, July 1st, and the album comes out the next day where you can buy it. And it's already out in Europe, and uh, it's getting great response. I mean, I'm actually, like I told you earlier, I'm, I really was worried about this. Where I thought, especially the sabotage, diehard sabotage were going to crucify me you know with have me hanging on a cross upside down or something but <laughs> i'm very happy that it's getting the response you know we got album of the month in Ard shock magazine in holland you know and we beat out you know sabbath megadeth queens right alice in chains we got you know this record got you know voted over that you know and that's awesome you know and John Oliver, let's say with um, Billboard charts and stuff like that, what's your belief in this system? You know that bands in this genre of music are actually, you know, making Billboard charts nowadays. Well, well I'll tell you what. I was shocked when TSO, when I got uh, this this package in the mail a couple of years ago. Well, I think mean, it was last year from Billboard, and it was a big plaque of uh, Billboard Top 100, and you know TSO's uh, Night Castle album. I think it was number four and uh, you know, and that, that freaked me out. Cause I was like, I'd never, I don't know. I think uh, gutter ballet was in the top of uh, 200 back in whenever it came out, but that's hard. That whole bill, well, that stuff is kind of skeptical to me. I don't know if it's all real or if people are paying off to get on there. I don't know. You know, I don't trust anybody in this business, you know, at all because it's all, you know, you know, you know what I mean, man. I don't even need to tell you, right? You know. Yes, and, you know, but in the historical, you know, things in the future, they're going to be looking at your, you know, name, and you're attached to the Billboard charts, which is a good thing, you know, for the people. Yeah, and well, fans. it doesn't suck, you know. It's good, it's good, it's cool, and it was very humbling, and I was like, wow, this is real, the, you know, you know, the TSO. I actually just got a, a, a platinum album, um, was it Thursday in the mail for uh, Lost Christmas Eve went platinum, and I got a new plaque, uh, which is cool to get. So now I have like seven of them. Seven platinum albums. Yeah, well, I have I have some gold, couple golds, and I have like uh, seven altogether. I think uh, three golds and four platinums, or five platinums and two golds. I can't remember because I never look at them. Now, now let's look at it like this. When you wake up in the morning and you look at these platinum albums, what do you think? 
thank God I didn't have to dig ditches my whole fucking life, man. I'd be a <laughs> terrible, I'd be a terrible plumber, a terrible electrician, and you know, you know, I'd be a worse bartender. I'd probably only make it a half hour being a bartender, and I'd be too drunk to serve drinks. And that isn't really what I think. I'm very, I'm very, I, I thank, believe me, I'm very grateful for what the success I've had. Believe me, I'm very grateful for it. It's enabled me to take care of my family, my parents. You know, my parents are not in good health, and I'm able to help them, and and that means a lot to me. And I owe it, I owe all of it to the to, to the people out there that that buy the records and come to the shows, whether it's Sabotage, TSO, JOP, Doctor Butcher. Billy's Blue Eyed Butt Sucker Band, whoever it is, I, you know, it's because of those people that I, I'm able to do this, and I thank them. Now, John, what are you going to be doing in 2013, you know, besides promoting this album? Well, hopefully still breathing every morning. Um, that's a good start. I don't know. I mean, I'm going to do some touring on this on a storyteller's thing, like I said, and I'm just going to see what happens. You know, the, this album wasn't really done as an album to go out and tour. It was really done as a performance. The album is the performance, you know, and that's how I set the album up. And uh, but I am going to go do some some stuff in late November, early December. Excellent stuff, and uh, hope you uh, continue doing the great work that you do because um, your voice is excellent as always, and a- anything you do is uh, always appreciated in the the community of hard rock metal. Well, I appreciate that, man, and uh, thank you for giving me some time. Hey, you're very welcome, and John, you have a great 2013. You too, my friend. All right, talk to you again. All right, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.